Hello and welcome back to Meraki Unboxed. My name's Simon Thompson, your host for today, and it's awesome to have you back with us once again. We're on episode 52 here, so we're going nicely on the podcast, and I hope you are a subscriber. If you are not, please head over to your favorite podcast app, look up Meraki Unboxed, hit the subscribe button, that way you'll get a fresh episode from us in your inbox every couple of weeks. And today we're going to be shifting gears into talking about the world of IT with two very esteemed Cisco VPs, no less. So stay with us for that. Uh, before I get into that, I just want to quickly remind you that this is a show that we want to be as responsive to you, our listeners, as possible. And as a result, the best way you can get involved is to send in your ideas. Now, you can reach me on Twitter at Meraki Simon. And that's a really good way to just reach out, say hello, tell us what you think of the podcast, tell us what you would like to see on there, what you'd like us to cover. And if you'd like to be on the show as well, you're always very welcome. We love to bring in guests from our customer and partner communities to share their experiences with what we do here at Cisco Meraki. Okay, so as I said, today we are going to be talking about the world of IT and Meraki with two of our VPs. And so I'm delighted to welcome Rebecca Stone and Jason Purnell. Hello to you both. How are you doing today? Hi, Simon. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm always doing well on a Friday. We're recording on a Friday. It's a long weekend coming up. How about you, JP? Simon, I'm doing fantastic. And like you said, it's a Friday. So most Fridays are good Fridays, and this is definitely a good Friday. Absolutely. Well said, well said. Why don't we start off with introductions and just tell us a little bit about what you do for us here at Cisco Meraki. Obviously, two of the most important departments in the entire business, so I'm super delighted to have you both uh, with us today. Um, Rebecca, tell us all about what you do for Meraki. Sure. I will start by saying all departments are important at Meraki, Simon, but I am responsible for overseeing marketing which includes marketing strategy, product marketing, and audience marketing, which you are on, our integrated marketing team, our go-to-market demand gen team, and our corporate communications team. I've been with Meraki for a little over a year and a half now, which has flown by. I was with the company for about four months before we all went home for the pandemic. Mm. So I definitely have been missing getting to see everybody in person, but in terms of what I'm doing every day, I'm overseeing the strategy for marketing, making sure that we are keeping as close to our customers and what our customers want to hear from us as possible, that we are talking about their challenges and also their exciting winnings that they're getting using the technology like Meraki and our partners and everything that's going on with IT, making sure that we're really putting that voice first in everything that we do. Mm. So. Yes, awesome introduction. And yes, of course, I agree. Every single department's important. I guess I'm a little biased as a marketing guy myself. But talking about important departments, Mr. Purnell, tell us all about yours. Oh, fantastic. Thanks, Simon. Uh, I lead our sales organization here at Cisco Meraki. And that organization is made up of inside sellers, outside field sellers, a channel organization who works with our partners who help us resell our solution set as well. But ultimately, we're here to um, serve our customers and we're to be the face of the solution set to our customers so they can understand what solutions and products they'd like to procure from Meraki in order to achieve the goals that they've set out. You know, I've actually been at Cisco Meraki for the last eight months, so I'm a little bit newer than Rebecca is. So I'm learning a lot from her and what everything is that we do here at Meraki. But I have been at Cisco going on 15 years. So it's wow. quite an exciting time for me to take that 14 years of experience prior to Meraki being at Cisco, the larger organization, and now having the experience of being with Meraki. It's, it's a fun time for me. I'm really excited about all the things that we're doing here at Meraki, inclusive of the innovation that's coming out of our business unit and what Rebecca's doing with her marketing team, what we're doing with operations to make things more efficient, just the whole organization that Meraki is. And I'm really excited to be here with you as well, Simon, to talk about a few things that people care about on how Meraki can better serve their customers and our community as a whole. So I'm really excited right. about this session. 
Right. And that's, of course, that's why we're here. We're all here trying to do the right thing for our customers to provide them with, you know, the best experience for connectivity, getting them connected in the simplest way we possibly can. So thank you both for your introductions. It's an amazing amount of experience you've got between the two of you. And I guess the next question that I have in my mind is now that you're here and you've got your feet well under the table at this point in time, you know, what does a typical day look like for you? So Rebecca, do you want to kick us off with that one? Sure. I think a typical day is probably a little bit different now that we're all working from home than it would be when I was in the office because there are a lot of meetings. It is common knowledge within Meraki that I am unfortunately stuck in my laundry room all day, every day as I work from home and manage with two kids who are also in school and a husband who's working from home. But a lot of that is Focusing on core things to marketing, like the technology, we work a lot with the IT teams and business systems teams on how we integrate the marketing tech stack in with the broader tech stack of the business and deliver on the services that we need to. There's a lot of talking to customers. I have been over the last six months or so sitting in on a number of calls that our sales teams are doing just because by now in previous roles, I would have been out in the field a lot, whether it be at events or going to customer sites and things, and just obviously haven't been able to do that. So I'm trying to sit in on three to four calls a week with some of our customers just to hear what they're talking about, hear what they're saying, because that's, I think, core to what helps me do my job better is by making sure that I understand what our customers need and want. That's really what my day consists of. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can all relate to the uh, <laughs> some of these realities that you pointed out there. The laundry room, I'm picturing it now. But of course, you can't tell anymore because of the wonderful WebEx virtual backgrounds. You look like you sit in an amazing office most of the time. That's exactly right. The backgrounds have, I think, significantly improved over the last 18 months. I think that's the, that's the biggest benefit. So nobody knows anymore. Everybody says they miss the laundry room because they can't see it anymore with my backgrounds. <laughs> And then the travel piece is interesting as well, because, I mean, we're starting to see the world slowly starting to open up and travel starting to happen again. I mean, you must be very excited about uh, getting out and meeting people in person, as I'm sure we many of us are feeling that way after having been cooped up for so long. Yeah, I was less than 24 hours away from going to my first customer visit with Meraki when everything got shut down and all flights were canceled summarily Mm. by Cisco. So I had not gotten a chance to see anybody. I only got a chance to go to one of our locations internationally. So I have been, you know, to the San Francisco office and the London office, and there's still the Sydney office, the Tokyo office, the Chicago office. There's there's lots of places that I want to go and Mm. see team members and see what's going on there. And uh, I think that has been a challenge. But also, in some ways, I think it has really allowed me to focus a little bit more on the changes that have needed to be made and focus on the business a little bit more because with travel, you lose some of that. So I think that there's positives and negatives to both of it. And I can only imagine, JP, I can only imagine how frustrating it must be as the leader of the sales organization to not have been able to get out and see customers in person. I mean, obviously, it's given you some time, I guess, to really get comfortable at Meraki and uh, and get into your role. So what has your typical day been looking like lately? You know, Simon, it has in a way. Being here at Meraki for eight months, I actually haven't met any of my team members in person. (laughs) So I'm getting very used to a a virtual environment, which in the past, uh, I was chatting with my wife just this week, and we're looking back at 2019, I was putting over 10,000 miles a month on the road, on the airlines, right? Just going out to see our customers. So, you know, when you ask that question, you know, what does a day in the life look like? You know, it evolves and it's evolved over the time of COVID on how we interact with our teams, how we interact with our customers and how we interact with our partners as well. And also how we have that sense of community and still do events and large webinars. That's been a fun experience for us because Mm -hmm. I think we're getting better at it, Simon. But I'll tell you, a number of us, including myself, we're very excited to get back on the road and to be able to see our customers face-to-face and the team face-to-face. But we do realize that it won't 
ever go back to normal, at least. And that's how I think about it. We do think that we're going to be able to leverage some of these best practices that we have learned in this virtual environment and carry those forward. And I think that's important because like Rebecca had said, you know, she has two kids at home. I have three kids at home. And the great thing about COVID is I've been able to spend time, more time with them Mm. and see some more of them at their events. And I desire that as a sales professional and as a father as well. So I think the unintended benefit of this COVID era that we're in right now is that we're going to have new ways to operate as we move forward, not only in our business here at Cisco Meraki, but many of the customers who I talk to on a daily basis I know that they're experiencing the same and they're going to take some of those best practices that they've learned in this virtual environment and carry those forward. Yeah, 100%. There's so much learning that's been happening for all of us. And like you said, there's pros and cons to everything. And it's been wonderful to be able to spend uh, you know, more time with the families and just connect with our loved ones in a different way than we're often allowed to in the hectic business world that we live in. I think this kind of concept of change, especially through the pandemic, is one that I think has been a very interesting topic we've covered a number of times on the podcast. And, uh, you know, I'm really interested in your own experiences in terms of leading these major departments at Meraki through this massive upheaval And, you know, the sort of changes you've seen, what do you think went well? What do you think we got right? And what were some of the learnings that we had along the way there? So, um, Rebecca, do you want to kick that one off? Sure. I could spend probably the entire rest of the podcast talking about (laughs) about this topic and what I would have done differently had I known. And I think that was the hardest thing, really. When we started this all, I think everybody was so convinced that it was going to be a short term thing, Mm. that it wasn't going to be this year to 14 month kind of odyssey that we've been through. And I think I probably, (laughs) if I, you know, with, with hindsight being 2020, I think we would have done a few things differently. We were in the middle of an organizational overhaul. We went from one model of working to a completely new model of working. And we did that three weeks after everybody went home. And had I to do it all again, I think we would have taken more time and planned out more to incorporate the challenges that really come from being remote workers and the additional burden that puts on communication. And I probably would have focused quite a bit more on building those communication skill sets first before we kind of revamped the whole organization because revamping the whole organization, which already created a whole bunch of disconnects in communication styles on top of having to do that without having the benefit of being in an office and just grabbing somebody for two minute or five minute chat when you needed to, I think made the transition take a lot longer than it potentially could have and would have. I think the benefit, though, has been the fact that it has put everybody on a level playing field. I alluded to the fact that we have team members who are in Chicago and in London and in Sydney, but really the bulk of the marketing team was in San Francisco in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And having been somebody like JP who traveled significantly, I also have felt the pain and understand the pain of those people in those remote offices. When you are in those meetings where everybody is talking in person, you can't hear all of the chit chat on the mics and you don't see everybody on the screen. And to just feel kind of as a second class citizen, I guess, almost because you don't have those immediate interactions to play off of. And being able to move everybody to a single video platform has been beneficial, I think, to that, like I said, putting everybody on that level playing field. So I have appreciated that. Yeah, that's something I noted myself. We had some challenges even before we were all sent home for this pandemic with the inclusion piece and, you know, with departments or rather offices in different parts of the world, different time zones, and trying to bring them into a departmental meeting and making them all feel the same. So like you said, I think that's been one of the kind of interesting things to watch is the way that we've got that level playing field now for people, regardless of location, which I think is you know, a really nice uh, development. And obviously we've been able to use some of our great technology to help us with that endeavor as well. From your perspective, JP, and what have been some of the, you know, surprises and developments around the pandemic that have been of interest in the sales world? You know, I sit here and I listen through some of the things that Rebecca was saying, and I couldn't agree with them more, right? Mm -hmm. I think just the way that you can create an inclusive environment 
through the technology that's available for us has been tremendous. I've been able to hear so many more voices from the sales organization. Our sales organization is give or take a thousand individuals, but we work with so many other departments as well. And, and I really feel it's important to have everyone's voice be heard. But the other piece that I've realized that we've really learned over time, if I'm honest with you, Simon, is the ability to have fun and celebrate in a virtual environment. Right. And that doesn't always <laughs> that doesn't always have to happen in person. I think when we are in person, it's natural for us to celebrate and then go catch a burger and a, and a beer or mm. beverage after work. And in this virtual environment, I found with the teams that, you know, the first six months of it, we were just jumping on meetings and we were just getting straight to the agenda. And even with customers, you know, we weren't making that space where when we're in a room with a customer, we're all grabbing coffee together. We're grabbing a pastry together. We're having some small talk before going straight into the conversation. But at the beginning of this virtual environment, we would always get straight into the agenda, if I'm honest with you, Simon. Yeah. And what I most appreciate over this last uh, six months, and we know that different parts of the world are still experiencing this very differently. So we're very mindful of that. But we've found ways to have a bit more fun. We found ways to have a after work happy hour to leverage interactive games online that we can do some trivia. Mm -hmm. um, even with our customers, we've decided not to just be one way communication on a webinar. There's ways to get customers interactive with us on some of the things that we're showcasing and are they digesting uh, some of the solution sets that we're talking about. And I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about that because those things will continue forward and if I had to do it all over again, I would have really done three things. One, figure out how to have more fun, like right out of the gate, maybe in some of those regular meetings that have an agenda that we want to follow, but make space for the small talk. Two, create these collaborative environments and where uh, within the technology that we use for videos called WebEx, we're able to see a lot of the audience there. So I, I typically call people out who haven't been able to say anything in the meeting, and that creates a more collaborative, a more inclusive environment. And I've learned to do that over time. I wasn't doing that right out of the gate. And then the third one is just creating space for myself. I do think in this time where we're all virtual, you can find yourself being back to back to back to back. Mm -hmm. And you need to find that space in which uh, you have your time to breathe for your brain to rest so you can be most impactful in the meetings that you're in. And I've learned to do that over the time that we've been working from home. I love the way that the organization has really striven to find ways to make this a more sustainable way to do business. And like you said, it's so easy to fall back on the intensity of those back-to-back -back meetings. Our calendars, typically when we set up a meeting, it's always 30 minutes or an hour is the default options that you have in the app. So no surprise that you get no breaks between these uh, these meetings. And we, we do have a pretty meeting-heavy life, as I'm sure many listeners do as well. Uh, so the way that we've been able to work in some of these ways to just let our hair down a bit and just get human and remind ourselves that we want to bring the whole person to work, not just the function to work as well. So I really love the way that the company supported that kind of development. It's been really cool. I, I want okay, to broad... Oh yeah, go ahead. Simon, but... before we go to the next topic though, I have never heard striven before. Is that a British <laughs> way to say strived? I, I am very curious about that. I, that is my understanding. Somebody who's <laughs> listening is no doubt going to correct me if I've uh, made a mistake there, but uh, <laughs> I think I'm on safe I ground. I, I'm not calling, I genuinely, like I haven't heard it before, so I, I thought it was cool. Coming from the country that originated the language, it's a big responsibility to carry, to get it all 100% right the whole time. So. I know, it's hard, <laughs> it's hard, it's hard, but you do it well. Thank you so much. All right. I want to broaden out the conversation at this stage. Let's uh, move out broader than what we're doing at Cisco Meraki and just look at the kind of the role of IT and how that's evolving over time. And, you know, we know that that's something that never stands still. It's the technology is just ever evolving in good ways, of course, helping us to get more efficient and, uh, and be able to create those spaces that we were just talking about a moment ago. First of all, I would guess is of interest to me is what the analysts 
and customers are telling us. We obviously want to have our ears wide open. We want to be as responsive as we can to the market that we operate within. And of course, our analysts and customers know better that I can think of to tell us what their experiences look like. You know, what have been the kind of learnings that we've taken from them around how things are trending? Sure, I don't mind uh, yeah. going first on this one, if that one's okay. Rebecca, I would tell you, it's a exciting time to be in IT right now. I think that's the way to summarize it, because when you think about going into this pandemic, technology was already important to most customers. Mm-hmm. Now we see technology is critical to all customers (laughs) and everyone has a technology strategy. In fact, many customers, I was on an analyst uh, review earlier this week and we were talking about how many customers are leveraging IT as an asset to grow their business, make their business more efficient or provide better customer care. Like there is no doubt that technology is in the middle of every business strategy now and as we move forward. What's interesting at Meraki and why I believe we've been seeing a lot of success is our goal is to simplify technology so passionate people can focus on their mission. Right. And if you think about that statement, you still want technology to be leveraged as an asset to get to the outcome that you desire. But you can't have technology be so complicated that the journey to get there is never fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm so excited. And I think you probably can hear it in my voice because when we sit down with customers and we consult and understand what use cases that they're dealing with within their environment and ultimately the outcome that they're trying to get to, it doesn't really matter to them what the box and what the technology they're using, what the brand or the manufacturer is. It matters that it gets them to where they're trying to go. And I'm really excited about all the innovation that Meraki has been able to bring to the marketplace because we're able to partner with our customers in a way that they acquire the technology from us, but our principle around simplicity allows them to get to those outcomes in a very fast way so that they can implement it within their organization. And that excites me because our time from customer acquisition of the technology to value realization and when they see the technology doing what they had desired to be tends to be very fast from measuring in technology terms for many of our customers when they partner with Meraki. Yeah, I think that's one of the most awesome pieces of what we're doing here at Cisco Meraki. And you nailed it there, JP, is this concept that we are not just providing technology, but we're providing technology that people actually can use to actually make a difference. And so, so much of what's been provided uh, by way of technology has been super complicated and just hard to implement. So it sounds great as a pitch and then you try and make it real and you run into all kinds of challenges and then it just doesn't happen. So I think the conversion that we achieve with our customers from sort of promise to reality, I think we just nail it so well which is really why I love working at this organization. Rebecca, if we think about the analysts and customers, I mean, is that what you've been hearing as well? And what sort of trends are you seeing uh, coming from that side of things? Yeah, I think that to both of your points, what I see from our customers is really what what's the old saying about necessity being the mother of invention, right? And the creative ways that our customers have used our products over the last year, whether it be the school system who installed APs, you know, MRs onto buses and then drove them into their districts to be able to give students who didn't have access to wireless technology in their homes being able to do that so that they could get to their classes on time and fully ready to participate, I think is an amazing story. The fact that you hear the biggest banks in the U.S. who are transitioning call centers from completely in an office environment to everybody being at home in under 48 hours. I think that this year has really taught us that 
if there's anything that we thought that we couldn't do <laughs> from an IT perspective, we've really been able to prove that that innovation can be there and that we have been able to prove that there are these wonderful examples of being creative when it really came down to it and really needing to be creative. And I think that's what speaks to kind of the heart of what I love about our IT customers is the creativity is there. Mm -hmm. And that creativity before was like, in the office and how do I get this to be a better experience? And what it's really proven is, it, again, to JP's point, is how core the technology is to just being able to operate in general and how we do that, whether it be in the public sector or in the private sector, has just been really cool to see. And again, this point that JP was making around the implementation of the technology makes me think about this word that's so important for us now in, in the world of IT, and that's experience. So we really do want to actually make a difference with this technology, not just purely provide connectivity, but provide an experience that actually helps our customers and partners to do what they're trying to do better. Um, so that one's been really, really interesting. What are some of these sort of significant experiences that we're trying to focus on as we look forward, um, Rebecca? We just talked about two of the most important ones, which is there are going to be many more remote employees than there were before. I think the data was showing when we were doing research on this that roughly 5 to 10% of employees in the United States were remote prior to the pandemic. And now there's an expectation that 40 to 50% or more could be permanently into a remote position. Mm -hmm. I will say, you know, as we talk about growing our teams, more than 50% of the team now at Meraki Marketing is going to be fully remote. They're working from home and they, they will not be associated to an office. So that's definitely one of them. The second one is more like you or an I, Simon, where we're hybrid, where we're going to probably be working from home more to avoid those commutes, mm -hmm. but we do have the benefit of being close to an office. And so how do we make sure that that is a seamless experience for our employees? And then I think what I just talked about with the school systems is more that smart spaces component where how do you think about the space that you're in, the environment that you're in, and using the technology to improve the experience for students, for your employees, for your customers that might be in a retail space or a hotel or something like that. And really the last one I think is safe environments, which you know goes everywhere from making sure that you have cameras to protect the um, the area that you're in, but also thinking about how you protect the things within it. We have sensors, our MT sensors that are protecting from water damage, from water leaks and things like that. So really thinking about the environment that you're in and protecting it from any threats that might be out there. So. Mm. Yeah, and like you said, when we're talking about uh, the hybrid setup and going to the office, whether it is full-time or part-time, whatever it happens to be, we have technology that can help us make that safer for that purpose as well. And all of this is about just trying to enable us to continue to be as efficient as possible. And th I think there's all sorts of human aspects that we need to consider as we move into a hybrid setup. Because like we said, and we were talking about this earlier, we said that uh, it's been a great level playing field for everybody, uh, having everybody remote. But now, of course, we've got to think about how we make that work in a hybrid setup. So, um, JP, any thoughts around what you imagine a kind of hybrid setup will work for your team? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I'll answer it, Simon, really for my team and maybe even our customers, because this conversation is basically at the forefront of all the conversations that we're having right now. When you look at a hybrid environment, the desire is for you to have that same experience, whether you're working from home or you're working from a remote office or you're working from a campus environment. And some of that's done behind the scenes and some of that's done with policies and what I have access to and making sure I have a secure environment to work from so that I can still have the same capabilities no matter where I decide to work. And, you know, we do a lot of that at Cisco Meraki and we enable that for our customers. The other piece about this is we're talking about the experience and we've talked a little bit about the IT experience earlier, but the user experience is changing rapidly and accelerating that non-touch digital environment that organizations are setting up within their office experience or even how when you go into 
a restaurant and how you order. Um, mm. All those experiences are changing because of the pandemic that we're in. And it's really exciting to think about how do I leverage technology in order to enable that? And there was an organization that we recently partnered with in which their desire was to create a digital experience within their restaurant environment in which would still enhance the experience of the customers who would decide to dine there with their families. And that is the world that we're going to today. And to make that simplistic rather than complicated, to focus on the experience of that individual who's into your storefront or into your retail environment, that is key to make sure that that experience is a good one mm -hmm. as you go into a digital environment, digital uh, workplace for some of us as well. And I'm excited that we are unlocking that for customers because it's going to change the way that we interact when we work with our own teams. Like when my team comes back into the office, we're thinking about how do we leverage Wi-Fi 6 to have video pods and still keep our social distancing? How do we make sure that we don't have too many employees in the same area? All those things can be enabled by the technology that customers have access to now. And, and that excites me. Mm. It is a very fascinating time. Like you said, and, and we've talked about already on this episode, we are really stretching IT to the limit in terms of seeing what it can do for us. And uh, experiences are changing everywhere. So as we all start to emerge from this, we're all going to be having these different experiences and seeing a change in how we take our own offer to the market. I'm sure everybody who's listening, you know, whatever business they're involved in, they're going to be experiencing some kind of a change. And, you know, JP, you touched on restaurants there and how that's changing. It's hard to think of anything that isn't being challenged or changing in some kind of way. So it's a fascinating time really for us. And I think really lends itself to interacting as much as possible with those customers to understand what they're going through. So, I mean, Rebecca, I know that we're thinking about a way to to sort of try to bring those customers in and actually get those conversations going. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about uh, what we have in mind there, what we're thinking about doing? Yeah, I think that there's a number of things. The one that I'm most excited about is coming up most quickly is our new user conference, which is called the Meraki Network. Mm. Uh, we will be hosting that on June 16th. And I am really excited about it because what we are focused on, and again, it comes back to what I said at the beginning, I believe our best opportunity in marketing is to build on the relationship with the customer. And so what we really focused on is how do we create a user conference that our customers are going to get the absolute most out of. And so there will be three tracks that focus on three different areas of what an IT professional cares about. The first is, of course, the one that you would expect from someone like Meraki and Cisco, which is the technology track, which mm -hmm. is where you're learning about all of the new tech and the solutions that we have to meet the needs of our customers. But then there's two other ones. The second is our business track, where we're really talking about the business trends and those to what we have just been talking about, the experiences that our IT customers need to deliver to their customers, whether they be retail customers or they're the employees that they work with. And so there will be a lot of talk about where the trends are going, what are the things that we need to do and deliver from a retail and hospitality perspective? How do we think about hybrid work and, and making sure that our employees, regardless of what technology we're using, are going to be able to experience what they want to in the best possible way? And then the last one is our learning and development track, which focuses on those IT professionals themselves. And I think, again, with everything that we've seen over the last 18 months, there has been a massive change in what our customers are expected to deliver and how they deliver it. And so that track is really about how you think about upskilling yourself and getting maybe new certifications that you might need or access to resources that'll help you get the most out of the technology that you have. Uh, just to underscore that, I think what you've described there, you think about the three different tracks that we're putting together here. This is all about getting the conversation going. So regardless of what part of a business organization you sit in, we want to be talking to you and we want to be talking technology to the technologists, business to the business minded uh, individuals, and of course, providing some something back to everybody who joins in terms of learning and development. So that on its own sounds pretty compelling. But what else have we got going on? Is there any other enticement there? 
Yeah, I'm glad that you asked. So I think there's one that's near and dear to both JP and my heart, which is we really focus on that diversity and inclusion initiatives over the past year. And that's something that I care strongly about. And so we have Rashma Sajani, who will be our opening keynote. She is, if you are not aware of her, the founder of Girls Who Code and the Marshall Plan for Moms. So she is a phenomenal speaker who's really going to talk about how we bring a more diverse group of people into that IT space and into that technology and engineering space. And so I'm excited to, to hear from her. And then our closing keynote will be Guy Raz, who is an amazing reporter, radio and podcast host. I mean, Simon, your aspirations to be Guy Raz, I'm sure, <laughs> are there. So I I'm a huge fan of his. He hosts three or four different podcasts for NPR that I listen to all of them. So yeah, I'm excited about both of them. And I'm sure JP can talk about the customers that are going to be speaking to. So I just quickly, Simon, say that we have some fantastic customers lined up to share at the event. And what's interesting about our customers stepping forward to say that they want to be part of this opportunity is the fact that typically we learn best when we look at something that we are having a challenge with and we see someone else who might have accomplished it already or we learn from their journey already. So we've had customers like the Dodgers, Wells Fargo, uh, some of our partners like Verizon, who's a partner and a customer who have already stepped up and said, hey, I want to be part of the event. Wow. I want to share what we're doing. And that really excites me because I think everyone benefits from when we collaborate and we hear from each other on how we actually can get there. And we know that we all have challenges, so learning from others never hurts. Mm. Yeah, that's great. I can't wait to hear what they have to say. I mean, exactly as we've been saying, it's bringing in all the wisdom. We don't have all of it at Marisco Meraki. We've got plenty to learn from our customers and partners, so I can't wait to see what, how that goes. If I was listening to this podcast episode, I might be wondering, well, you know, is this some, some kind of a special event? Do I have to be invited to it? Do I need a ticket? So what's the deal here? Um, Rebecca, what's the truth? Our listeners can join, absolutely, and, and they sign up by going to events.meraki.net slash Meraki Network event. And don't worry, Simon, I'm sure you will I, You will be adding it to the notes so you don't have to find a pen and scramble to Absolutely. write that down. Yep. You can also just go to meraki.com and there's a little call to action there that you can click on to get to it pretty quickly. So we invite everyone who's listening. We'd love to have you. It is really a focus on customer benefits. It's not, sorry, JP. We really are trying not to make it a sales pitch. So we want everybody to come, <laughs> everybody to participate. And the whole purpose is to really bring together the community and make sure that we're hearing from each other to get those benefits about the experiences that we have yet to discover in the future. Yeah, it's such a good time to be trying to pull together in whatever ways we can. So, you know, community, the like the Meraki community online is a great example. This podcast is an example of ways we reach out. This event sounds like it's a great way to have everybody come back together again and really sort of talk about together about how we move forward from this particular point. I was saying, Simon, you can see why I'm having so much fun being at Meraki because we like to have fun with each other. You heard the jab that Rebecca threw at me there. I know you heard that. <laughs> we can take and all of I that offline, as they say. <laughs> and I will also say, I think that it's what is really great is the fact that next year, I really hope that this will be an in-person event, not an online event. So this will be your first and only chance to come and attend it online. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a really good point on which to end. We really do want to be able to do this stuff in person. But thank goodness we have the technology to be able to bring it in. And of course, it gives us the opportunity to open it up to the entire world. So wherever you're listening from, you know, do please reach out and sign up for that event. It is completely free and we would love to have your participation. As I said, and as Rebecca said, we will put the link to go and get signed up in the show notes for this episode. But just to say it out loud again, just I'm not sure, you know, if you were able to see that on your app, but just to be absolutely 100% for sure, events.meraki.net forward slash Meraki Network Event. One word. All right, time to wrap things up. I want to thank our guests today, JP, Rebecca. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you, Simon. I was excited. Thanks for having us. It's been a blast. 
It's been fun. What a great way to wrap the week up. Um, so, all right, well, let's do that right now. So thank you again for joining. We'll be back in two weeks from now. Do let me know if you would like to be included in this podcast in any way. Reach out to me on Twitter, at Meraki Simon. I'd love to hear from you. Tell us what you think. And apart from anything else, we hope to see you at the Meraki event coming up very soon. Have a great day and bye-bye for now. <laughs>